text for today is John 11.35, which is one of my favorite verses, as growing up it took virtually no effort to memorize. If you'll turn with me in your red Bibles to John 11.35, our verse today is, Jesus wept. <laughs> and I, I found it interesting, that's the NIV translation, so I went to go look it up, I always like to look it up in different versions just to see what different translators have to say and how that might change the meaning. And virtually every translation I read said, Jesus wept. <laughs> so then I thought I better go look it up in the Greek, of course, because <laughs> the Greek is where, where it's really at. And I looked up the verse and it said, et akrusen ho Jesus. And I found that very interesting. <laughs> first off, to, to note that the name of Jesus is not first. It, it, it's not the first word in the verse. They actually put the word for wept at the beginning, which is significant because it places emphasis <laughs> on how Jesus was weeping and the fact that it was indeed in the past tense, which meant that at one point Jesus had been weeping and then stopped. <laughs> and is no longer weeping today as he sits at the right hand of God in heaven. He is no longer weeping, praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus wept. And we see in him, as we see in ourselves, the range of human emotions. You know, I remember back on Uncle Andy's farm. <laughs> I, I lived with my maternal uncle in upstate New York during my high school years as my parents were missionaries in South America. And every morning, I got up to milk the cows. And there's this one particular cow, a very particular cow. And I remember one morning I got up bright and early with an automatic milking machine and of course, you know, washed it down as usual, cleaning and checking her. And as I was putting on the milking machine, this cow kicked me. I was so angry. I tell you what, I stood there in my fury and hit that cow. Of course, what's that to a cow? It probably didn't feel it at all. But in the middle of all that, somehow I broke my hand. That hurt. I had to get a cast on it. Now, the very next week, I was running hurdles at high school track game. and I caught my back foot on one of the hurdles as I was coming down and I was going to put my hand out to break my fall but no, there's a cast on it. So I dipped my right shoulder and jammed my shoulder. Now, by the way, I, I do have to mention that I did set the record for hurdles at my high school. Of course, I was the only one running hurdles. It, it was a very small upstate New York high school. And, you know, come to think of it, I only got one other award while I was at school. Because, you see, I was an excellent typist. And there was this one girl in our class, and I was actually trying to impress her. But at the school awards ceremony, of course, they're calling up all these young men for their athletic awards, and then they call Jonathan Seda, fastest typist. <laughs> and in fact, you know, I, I didn't get a trophy for that either. In fact, I've never been given a trophy in my life, which is... It's time for us to put an end to that over. <laughs> spending time with my eldest daughter, Michelle. She was in ninth grade at the time. And, of course, 
spending time with her, as all of us parents should be spending time with our children, especially in their high school years. She was just starting track and was unsure of which event to do, and of course I was encouraging her to try out the hurdles. So we went to the track and the hurdles were set up, so I thought I'd show her how it was done. <laughs> I went running, took off, and yes, caught my back foot on the hurdle <laughs> and wound up with another cast. <laughs> but the break of my arm was worth the bonding experience that <laughs> happened with, with me and my eldest daughter. And, you know, it, it is so sad to see how many parents get caught in this trap of not spending time with their children. And I'd like to read to you some of, my, some of my favorite lyrics from a song that I think just captures the tragedy of the situation. A child arrived just the other day. He came into the world in the usual way, but there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And I, he was talking before I knew it, and as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be just like you, Dad. I'm going to be just like you. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, <laughs> little boy blue, man in the moon. When are you coming home, Dad? I don't know when. But we'll get together then, son. We'll have a good time then. My son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Let's go out and play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I've got a lot to do. He said, that's OK. And he walked away, but his smile never dimmed. said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, I'm going to be just like him. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue with the man. When are you coming home, Dad? I don't know when. But we'll get together then, son. You know, we'll have a good time then. And so, we see from our text <laughs> that love really is the greatest of emotions. But is it really an emotion? Well, yes and no. <laughs> Certainly love moved me to change my life for the better when being struck by the beauty of the lovely freshman, Dale Michelson. <laughs> she was a good student and spent a lot of her time in the library. While not a particularly focused student, I found myself spending a lot of time in the library, too. <laughs> you know, we ended up getting married and learned a lot just from my first few years of marriage. You know, I always tell couples when they're about to be married, I tell them, today you are getting married because you love each other. And then I tell them, all that is about to change. <laughs> From this day on, you will love each other because you are married. <laughs> you know, I have a little game that I used to play with Kristen. I'd say, guess what? She'd say, what, Daddy? And I'd say, Daddy loves you. And then I'd ask her, Kristen, why does Daddy love you? She quickly learned the right answer. She'd say, because you are my daddy. You know, the lessons we teach our kids, even from the youngest of ages, whether by word or by example, are just so important. And in fact, I'd like to, to share with you some lyrics that I think just capture how important this really is and the effect that it has on them as they grow up. Well, my, he came home from college just the other day. <laughs> so much like a man that I just had to say, Son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and said with a smile, well, What I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the keys. I'll, I'll see you later. Can I have them, please? And the cat's in the cradle, and the silver spoon, the little boy blue and the man. When are you coming home, son? I don't know when, but we'll get together then, Dad. We'll have a good time then. Tears come to my eyes as I think of the words of these songs. 
and the tragedy that they represent in the lives of not only Hispanic people like myself, <laughs> but in the lives of people from all tribes and nations and tongues and socioeconomic backgrounds. Which brings us to our text this morning. <laughs> Furthermore, he says, therefore, and whenever you see a therefore, it is always <laughs> crucial to check out what the therefore is there for. Because a text without a context is a pretext. 